Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RRS Aquaculture. As you might know, a lot of investors are interested in aquaculture projects due to their high growth for the next few years. But there are several mistakes that everybody usually makes when they're starting off in their new farm. And in this video, I'll be sharing the top 3 aquaculture mistakes that I see a lot of new farmers get into. So stay tuned. Welcome back guys. For those who are new to RS Aquaculture, we actually produce weekly content with regards to shrimp farming and mud crab farming using RAS systems or Bioflock. So if you like our content, do like and subscribe and stay tuned so that you can get a notification for our latest video. So the first common mistake that everybody makes is usually overstocking. So what does overstocking actually mean? It means that you are putting excessive amount of shrimps or shrimps or crabs in Per unit of water and why do you tend to do that there are several reasons why people overstock the first is they are trying to improvise or improve their profitability by maximizing yield that's the first second is however sometimes when you buy shrimps pls people will tend to give you an extra and hence leading to overstocking the result of overstocking can vary according to the type of systems that you have and what you see here is typically once you overstock, some of the crabs might not be able to mold properly or they are cannibalized by each other. Or their nutrition might be affected and hence leading to slower growth and higher mortality. And this is also evident in not just grow out stages but also during the nursery stage or even the hatchery stage in which the quantity of crablets or pozoya needs to be monitored properly to avoid the event of overstocking and mass mortality. So apart from the hatcheries, another important area to watch your stocking density is during the distribution process in which you are selling the crabs. So it is also common for people here to overstock and resulting into mass mortality. And the second reason why a lot of people fail in aquaculture projects is due to poor water quality monitoring. As you can see over here, I have my colleague that is actually doing some water quality test kit. Actually, this is ammonia and we tend to do it at least two to three times every week and this is actually very important because it measures the amount of nitrogenous waste in the system the amount of quant the amount of ammonia that is harmful to the organism might be actually so small that you cannot actually see ammonia levels in the water just by using your eyes or touching the water hence it is actually very important for you to use test kits to measure the amount of ammonia inside the system and you can see after five minutes it shows you the results of so what tends to happen over time is a lot of people tend to be slightly overconfident uh, when they're seeing their cultures doing well they don't measure any of this water quality because this they see a lot of this process as actually very time consuming and labor intensive and bear in mind that typically in our farms we measure up to eight to nine parameters that are important to the shrimp or mud crab farming so this is actually very important and here's a, a snapshot of two water quality that might look exactly the same but have varying different amount of ammonia level right being the left is actually very high and the one that is on the right is actually very low and on the onset of it you can't really see a difference so measuring and measuring water quality is one aspect there's also another aspect of monitoring either by dosing of chemicals probiotics and all of these require you to be able to measure the base level and then decide on how much chemicals that you going to put in whether is it probiotics or even disinfectants or even other chemicals such as calcium or magnesium to maintain the correct salinity levels or even the calcium and magnesium levels so this is actually very very important and for those who are in the biofluxion farming you might even use some extensive measurement techniques such as the Umhoff cone to measure the total suspended solid that is only unique in a biofluxion system and not rust and for the third most common problem that everybody tends to have is poor record keeping. So here's a bioflock, you know, behaves under a microscope. And what we do at our farm is routinely we use this microscope to check how is the bioflock behaving. Because bioflock itself is actually a living organism and that living organism 
being even shrimps or even bioflora or crabs, they do not respond very abruptly to changes in the systems. For example, if you were to introduce some new hardware such as a nanobubble system or a paddle wheel or even a new brand of probiotics, a lot of these changes would not happen overnight. And hence, this requires a need for you to have an extensive record keeping system over long periods of time to see how your performance are actually changing. Right. So this is also evident in other cases. As you can see, this bioflock is actually slowly turning reddish in color and hence the performance is also slightly a bit different. But this doesn't happen overnight and it gradually changes. So for someone who's continuously working on the farm, you might not realize the changes because it changes very minute over time and day by day. And this is also evident in also some of the soft shell crab farming or even shrimp farming where you are actually using a lot of this record to monitor some of your performance or changes in such as the processes. For example, if you decide to feed instead one time per day instead of twice per day or even looking at changes in your protocol into three times feeding per day, what are the associate changes that you're going to have? Without a solid record keeping, you will not be able to perform perform an analysis or even compare the performance three months ago or even six months later. And this also extends or even into hardware. You might have the latest hardware such as the schemas or even some of the nanobubble system. But some of these changes do not change your system overnight because fish, they are very slow to react to some of the newer change. And you will only see that cumulative improvement over long periods of time. So this is actually an important concept for those to who are farming fish or farming crabs or shrimps because a lot of problems we see on the ground is many times that they come to us with a problem that you know my fish is dying my crabs are dying or my shrimps are dying but when we ask for the six months record for water quality changes in bioflock behavior or even behavior in feeding rates or any changes a lot of farms are actually not being able to provide us with this data and what we realized over time is we will actually have to perform a lot of due diligence or going back and checking back five to six months worth of water quality data and where the consultants are spending a lot of time and not formulating a correct decision because most of the time we lack that information to perform some of this decision. And this also might extend out to you know the different kind of probiotics brand you are using, whether is it our RS aquaculture probiotics or even other brands. So this is actually a very important thing to take note. So that's all for this video guys. We hope you enjoy and learn something about this top three aquaculture mistakes and not to have them in your farms. And we hope to see you here again back at RS Aquaculture. So do like and subscribe and to learn more about aquaculture.